do it. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, we're back. <laughs> uh, today's theme song is It's Been a While Since You and I Had Lunch Together. Brunch. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while. You know the rest. It's like an elite or that, something. <laughs> from that band in the early two thousands. It was excellent. That's not gonna be today. Well, hey it's guys. been a few months since we came to you on a Sunday morning for brunch, so we thought we might start up with what is new since we last spoke Cass um okay since we last spoke what is new for me is my arcs came in for everybody shine yes. and I'm very happy um as you can see we've got a whole bunch of plus size kiddos totally owning the front page right there and I just I, I love it so much. And then on the back, we also have all of the contributors. Yay. Also owning it. Yay. Also owning it. And then we have 400 pages of fat kids owning it within. So I'm very Yay. excited to be holding my book. Yay. And what is the release date and where can people pre-order it? Oh, that's good. <laughs> you can pre-order it anywhere. Um, it releases May 11th with Bloomsbury and you can add it on Goodreads. You can request it at your library. Um, you can gift it to your loved ones, be they fat, skinny, or in between. It's a book for everybody. Um, but yeah, so it's all about celebrating fat acceptance and just living your life in the moment. Yes, every body Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Taj, how about you? Uh, that's a great question. Not much. No, I'm like, for me, um, it's like everything is happening, but it's happening behind the scenes right now. So it's like, I'm still in edits for book one. I'm actually drafting book two. We're talking about which proposals we're going to submit for option, like all of the kind of back end things that people don't really get to see. Um, and so I'm working on that mostly right now. I'm still also working with my lovely mentee from Pitch Wars. And so we're going to get her out in front of agents very soon. Nice. Um, I think the last show we did was like the week my book came out. So it's been a busy uh, few months with that. But uh, we are also uh, have Cherish and I have been working with our Pitch Wars mentee and uh, her book, The Art of Scandal is is out in the world and making the rounds. And we are so excited to see um, what happens with it because it's amazing. Um, and I, both of us were taking some some notes on love scene writing because they're incredible. Uh, for me, I got to um, announce my second book, and this is the cover, The Fastest Way to Fall, which will be out in um, November, on November 2nd. I'm really excited about that. And then I got to announce that I get to write more books for Berkeley. So I announced that deal a couple weeks ago. So um, my next book will be Fall 22 and Fall 23. And I'm working on uh, the third one now, which is about a divorce attorney who performs weddings and a dude bro wedding planner. And they hate each other. It's an enemies with benefits kind of story. So that has been my bookish world. Cherish, how about you? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Denise was reminding us uh, how much we've accomplished while being mentors, and uh, you know, I, I put out a little, a little ditty. It's a novella. It's called Trust. Oh, oh shit! Where's mine? <laughs> oh, we forgot to we forgot to tell Taj. There we go. Let's do it again. <laughs> It's a novella called Trust Falling for You. And, um, you know, I self pubbed it and I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, yeah, it's about uh, 
rivals to lovers, professors who come together, who are stuck together at a team building retreat in the woods of Wisconsin. There is only one cabin and uh, they are stuck to participate uh, in these terrible team building exercises. They have to get to know each other. They have to put past some of their grudges against one another. And of course, you know, they fall in love or yeah, they fall in love. It's a, uh, it's a happy for now kind of situation, but they probably will get married down the line. I don't know. <laughs> Which of the two characters do you relate to most? <laughs> Ah, okay. So the heroine is Yolanda Watson. She is um, just a messy, messy professor who shows up late to things, talks really loud and forgets things, but she's also a really fun professor. Uh, Samuel Morris is the um, straight lace, straight lace, tight ass, rule abiding, uh history professor who's just like keep my head down and keep pumping out articles and i don't i don't like small chit chat with colleagues and he's a virgo she's a leo obviously uh, i wrote yolanda after myself <laughs> um yolanda is based on me and my husband who are really really sloppy academics like we're really good at our jobs but please don't expect us to do like administrative work well <laughs> Taj or Cass how about you are you Yolanda or Samuel Yolanda I mean if we go by all of the wonderful horoscope things we read a couple months ago I'm probably a Samuel I'm 100% that Sam. I love the administrative work. <laughs> That's really hard. A lot of, <laughs> I have been getting a lot of feedback from readers who have said the same thing. Like Yolanda makes me so nervous. I feel really bad for Sam. <laughs> oh, I mean, some benefits here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, it was really fun to write, and I was writing it while brunching with you guys, so you kind of were there for the whole journey, really, me asking you, like, oh, what are some team-building activities I can throw in this book? <laughs> and, uh, Denise, since you've actually hosted team-building things, like, you were very helpful, so, yeah, it was a good time writing it. It was nice to put something out during this pandemic nonsense. Uh, and where can people purchase this lovely novella? You can get it uh, as an ebook on basically all platforms, but the paperback is only available <laughs> on Amazon. <laughs> um, yeah. That's her. That's me. <laughs> It is such a fun read and like so smart and sexy and just like a happy book to read. Thanks. Who was the hardest character well, to write? The hardest character? Probably Sam because he's the exact opposite of like what I know. And um yeah. And I guess I, we have like a lot of supporting characters too, who are kind of cut ups in their own way, like, you know, interesting characters. And I've pulled a lot of them from like people that I've actually worked with in academia. Um, Peter, the theologian who tells the Jesus jokes, like, I know that guy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I I had a lot of good, I think I had a lot of fun writing it. There's like no angst in this. You're not going to get a dark moment where they're like, you know, trying to search their souls to find out if they need to be together. 
it's basically yeah i'm i've been behaving foolishly like this whole time he's actually a really good dude like i should be boning him right and then she does (laughs) (laughs) so yeah yeah because we love you we have agreed to do a team builder icebreaker for the recording we have that you came up with well you decided on (laughs) well it's in the book i mean i think everybody at a team building retreat has to or if you're doing some type of icebreaker activities like the whole true two truths one lie game gets thrown out a lot um every time i've made my students play it it's yielded a lot of really goofy lies <laughs> so i'm happy to play with uh, three other writers who are really good at lying you do it on a daily <laughs> that's true well, since you're our game master you get to um call on people Ooh. I well be first. what's up i cannot be first fair enough uh i will go with cass okay <clears throat> let's see my first truth is um i've won over thirty thousand dollars playing poker in my poker career um my second truth would be i've kissed an alligator on the nose and my third truth would be i have moved over 32 times oh these are all good i'm gonna guess because you are a former floridian Mm -hmm. so the alligator thing is plausible for sure but you're also a champion poker player i'm gonna go with three i'm gonna go with poker and maybe it's just slightly less than the number you said I think you, I think it's not 32. You two are correct. I've only moved 27 times, but I have <laughs> an on the nose and I have won over $30,000 in poker since I've been playing. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, that's a lot of money. Okay. I won't say how much I've lost, but I have won over 30. <laughs> Well, that's gambling. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I counted it up and it's only been 27 times of me. Good Lord. Okay. Huh. Well then, uh, Denise, you're next. Uh, yeah, my three. I married my best friend. I married my cousin. I married my brother. <laughs> Oh, this is upsetting. Only one of those things is a lie. I want to say con- brother's the lie. I'm concerned. Like not. I feel like it's got to be like brother by marriage kind of situation or something like that. Well, you obviously married your best friend. I mean, he's grown to be your best friend, at least. This is totally like that I'm my own grandpa situation. And- <laughs> <laughs> so candidly, uh, since I do these so often, this is my go-to uh, for this game. Rightfully. Yeah, it's a good, yeah, good one. Um, okay, I'm going to go with the cousin. Yeah. It is the cousin, is the lie. So I am, um, I can perform weddings. So I performed my brother's wedding. So I married him and his wife. I married um, my best friend and his wife. 
And actually, I guess technically I've married a cousin, but it was my husband's cousin. So I think that's still fine. So I've done um, nine weddings, I think. All my couples are still together. So I have a pretty good track record. Um, and that's kind of the, that's kind of where I got the idea for the book I'm working on now. But yeah, so I performed my brother's wedding and my best friend's wedding before he went to Iraq um, years and years ago. And yeah. It's wordplay. Word you got us. Tricky, tricky. <laughs> Damn it. But uh, was... Parrish's face when I was listing those. <laughs> <laughs> Blood in the what? <laughs> okay. Uh, Taj, would you like to go last? I think I can go. None of these really work together, so it'll be interesting to see what people choose. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I've never taken a cooking class. I once pumped gas next to Debbie Allen. I am deathly afraid of most insects. Okay, well, the third is definitely true. <laughs> it's definitely true. <laughs> That is true. Um, Definitely afraid to the point where I do like the the like running in place, high pitch. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna say the second one is the lie. I'm gonna say not taking a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, that's a hard. Oh, I'm gonna say you have taken a cooking class and it was probably just one because you were like fuck this i'm really good at this i don't need to take any more <laughs> ready spinals answers in cast I, the, yeah i'm gonna go with the pumping gas as a lie no wait the, it was haven't taken a cooking class or have taken a cooking i've never i've never I feel like that might be true. So I'm going to go with the pumping gas as a lie. I have pumped gas next to Debbie Allen. Yes. And I have never taken a cooking class. I knew it. So you're not deathly afraid of insects, right? Wait. No, you are deathly afraid of insects. I absolutely am. Did I oh, okay. those all true? <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens on no sleep. Okay. There is one in every group that does all true. <laughs> that was just tricky. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I've never taken a cooking class. I should at some point. You're so yeah. good though. You're so good. You no, should. I don't think you need it. Yeah. You should I love that. And you're so honest. You could tell a lie. <laughs> like it literally, I was sitting here writing stuff down because I was like, I have to think of a lie. What's a lie? Well, you did the big reveal and all of our faces were like, wait, what? <laughs> huh. That's really so hard to pick. Uh, so what did Debbie Allen say to you? She was very nice. Like we I, we were in LA. That was back when I lived in LA and and you know we were there you know like the hard part is of course there's no like full service gas anymore nobody's coming out to pump gas for your car and she seemed kind of irritated that she had to do it but like you know like why not why wouldn't you be with debbie allen when was why this that she expected full service at a gas station i mean you know like but she was she was sweet you know i used to meet people when, when i was in la all the time i used to run into lauren graham all the time i used to um there was this place that i used to love for brunch and one time babyface was there and he was like two tables down and he and i were the only two black people <gasps> and so i looked at him he looked at me he knew that i knew who he was and i was like i'm gonna leave him alone because you know he probably never gets to just enjoy and that's how I've kind of always navigated LA. I don't, I don't want to be the person who's like, oh my God, can I come and take a picture with you? You know, like let them have their moment. And like, we just kind of nodded at each other and it was cool. You know? Oh, that's what nice. I missed about LA is all the random, Gordon Ramsay's 
stood yeah. next to me waiting in line at the restroom at the SLS restaurant and all these people were coming up to him and he came I was leaning up against the wall because Jamie my sister was in the bathroom and he like leaned up right next to me and I was like it's Gordon Ramsay I'm not gonna say anything but right. I was so excited. <laughs> that's great yeah, I was at, I was in a mall ordering like my favorite fries at this one mall and the person next to me was this super tall guy and he ordered like a triple chili cheeseburger. And so I kind of like looked at him like, damn, do you need all of that? And so I'm looking at him and I look up and it's Brian McKnight. <laughs> Just randomly at the mall getting a triple cheeseburger. Um, but yeah. I used to run into people. I ran into um, Tisha Campbell in the deli section of a Gelson's market. Um, I ran into Martin Lawrence at a basketball game, and that got weird. Um, <laughs> did he have a puppet on his hand? He did not have a puppet, but he was acting like someone else. It was, it was, uh -huh. a very, it, yeah, I'll tell you guys, I'll find. But anyway, um, <laughs> But yeah, all kinds of people. Like it was, it was nonstop just being in LA. Like, couldn't. Stop oh, that's so like, cool. It's so weird. You don't run into anybody in Des Moines. <laughs> when I lived in no. DC, I did run into one of the Real Housewives of Potomac at a restaurant. Which one? Yeah. Giselle. Of course, it was Giselle. Yes. <laughs> she looks really good in person. I really bet. Uh, Cherish, how about you? Okay. okay. Let's see. Do better than I did because clearly I don't listen to the <laughs> <laughs> It's in the name. Um, let's see. Um, huh. My brain, my brain just kind of went like, I think I had something and then I lost it. Uh, okay, so, all right. Um, I have karaoke in four different countries. I once broke up a bar fight and I have a black belt in Taekwondo. Hmm. I really want you to have broken up a bar fight. I feel like you have broken up a bar fight. I feel like your black belt Taekwondo prowess. I feel like I, none of you are a black belt. I'm going to say the, mm, I'm going to say the bar yeah. fight because I want to imagine you with the black belt. <laughs> I'm going to say karaoke because I want to imagine you with both the black belt beating people up, being like, stop fighting. Yeah. Okay. Maybe the black belt was a little too much. <laughs> I only made it up to green belt and I don't know where that is in the hierarchy of belts. <laughs> no, but it does match your book cover. Yes, it does. That's right. All tied hey, in. now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, I, I didn't go that far with Taekwondo. So, uh, uh, but, oh, go ahead. Who's fighting in the car? I used to work at a, a Irish pub called Scruffy Murphy's in Georgia, and it was a terrible job. And <laughs> one of these days, I'll write about it. I mean, I kind of did get started on another romance. Um, and the owner took a lot of shortcuts and barely paid us, and obviously didn't have enough staff on hand. So I did work the door, like checking IDs and stuff. And a Canadian hockey team came in and they were causing a bit of ruckus and a fight broke out between two of the players. And I stepped in and said, take this outside. 
I didn't have to kick anybody. <laughs> I was picturing a like, dude house, like bam, and just like laying them all out. No, no, not quite Patrick Swayze. Um, <laughs> right. Rip out his throat. <laughs> um, and I have karaoke in America, in Sweden, Denmark, and Finland. So yeah. I love karaoke. Which place had the karaoke? Finland, without a doubt. I think it's their national pastime. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we went to a place that used to be, I think it used to be a sauna. And so it was outfitted to become like a bar, karaoke bar. But you could still see like the wood, cedar wood paneling where a sauna used to be. And um, yeah, a lot of death metal. So Noah, <laughs> it, I think it tracks, but like uh, Noah sang Bowie and he was really good at it. Let's dance. And some drunk lady was just like throwing herself on him. <laughs> <laughs> and I sang my, my, my standard, like, Go to karaoke song is Alanis Morris. That's you ought to know. Solid, and that got that got things going. I think people were like into it. I mean, how do you not hear that song and just feel like righteous indignation? Yeah, you usually get a lot of young ladies, you know, screaming it and crying. There's <laughs> 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 at least one who is out with her friends after getting dumped. <laughs> Real. <laughs> okay, so we need to switch gears and give Denise the chance to come up with a romance plot. It's been a while. I don't know if she's got it in her. Um, but we got to hit her with, um, is it something team building related? I mean, yeah, it's up to you. Just give me some profession or cue or something to build off of and I'll see what I got. Well, I think we need to incorporate um, what we were talking about before, Taj just being a hermit and running away <laughs> from the world like Julia Roberts and sleeping with the enemy. <laughs> um, once I learned that I was an introvert, I very much owned it, and I tend to hermit up, and <laughs> when those moments happen, nobody can find me, including people that want to give me money. <laughs> this bitch is not opening her mail, and people are sending her money. <laughs> it's true. It's true. For years, apparently. <laughs> So have we have we done a hermit before? I think so. Uh, yeah, I've, we've done some some hermits, but I can do another. Have we done a former postal worker? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. okay, got it. Postal worker and a recluse. Uh, yeah, so our, our hero is Joe Top Post, who is a uh, grizzled postal employee who has risen through the ranks um, and is, is set to be Postmaster General. Really going to shake things up. Uh, but Joe Top Post has seen some things. Joe Top Post has been there, been around, and he's a little jaded. And so uh, his colleague, Jan top post uh his sister maybe says you know what you need to just take some time before you become postmaster general and find yourself and so uh joe top post goes to a uh retreat in the woods in wisconsin and uh engaged like they put him just with this group of people and so he's doing a ropes course he's he's doing trust falls um he is doing all these extroverted things and he hates it. Uh, and so he decides, you know what? I don't need to be postmaster general. I'm running away. And he runs into the woods. 
presumably never to be seen again. But while wandering through the woods, uh, like um, uh, Little Red Riding Hood style, um, he um, stumbles upon this cabin and he notices the mailbox is full, like overflowing with mail. And so he's like, I'm a post, you know, postal employee. This is this is troubling. So like knocks on the door and the person peeks out and you can't see who they are. And they're like, hey, you have a lot of mail. Do you want me to bring it up to you? And the person's like, yes. And they kind of growl it. Um, and then he brings the post. And when the person opens the door, it's this stunning um, woman. Shared to use Jan. Uh, Jane top permit and Jane top permit top permit um accepts the mail and like just cash falls out of all these envelopes that have been sitting for so long they've sort of disintegrated so just like money is raining down and he he helps her pick it up and she invites him in for tea and um because she lives near this this team building retreat they play two truths and a lie and the two truths and a lie gets a little steamy and a little romantic <sighs> And so they keep playing it. And then in the end, his last lie is I could never fall in love again. But that's the lie because he's fallen in love with her. And then he decides I'm ready. I'm ready to become the postmaster general. And she decides she's ready to open up all her mail. And when she does, she finds billions of dollars just waiting in checks and cash and diamonds. And um, then they live happily ever after. And that's that's the story of Taj, AKA Jane the Hermit and Joe Top Post. Brava. <laughs> Stunning. So and I think there's just to find there's out. a lesson to be learned there. Taj, open your mail. All right. Yeah, check your mail. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Checking my mail and and doing dishes are my least favorite things. Like, I would rather pack up my entire apartment than do dishes. Yeah, I get that. But there probably won't ever be money in your sink, and there could be money in your mailbox. Well, and none of this money was expected. I had no idea any of this was coming to me. So it was just like a lovely, pleasant surprise. I know. When we're off camera, there's a whole other set of questions that we're going to have for you about. I'm here for it. <laughs> but our last bit was just to go around and see what everybody is reading now or what is, if you're not reading now, what's kind of at the top of your um, to read list? Yeah. Um, Honey Penny, you want to go first? <laughs> is that Taj? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm kind of in a holding pattern when it comes to reading because I'm both editing one book, so I'm in one main character's mind and I'm also drafting another one. So I'm trying to like not influence um, my writing at all with, with other stuff. So I'm halfway through, like, I, and the funny thing is we've done things where we were talking about what we've been reading and I've said this before on a different episode, which was months ago. Like I started, Catherine Adele West's Saving Ruby King months ago. And then I had to put it on hold because of all of my book stuff. Um, but I'm like halfway through that. It's so, so good. I've already guessed the ending. I, I feel a way about it. Um, but also, this is on my list as are several other wonderful, wonderful. I have like this huge pile that's just growing because I can't stop myself from ordering more books. Oh, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> you've got a lot i do what about you cass um i just finished revisions that i'm hopefully going on sub for very very soon and um so <laughs> my two that i am hoping to start shortly is um the gilded ones because i heard amazing amazing things about this and then also um unashamed musings of a fat black muslim so Ooh. those are the two that i have in my tbrs hopefully this coming week because while i wait it's good to read <laughs> yes this is the excruciating part waiting to be on sub and all that 
Yes, yes, yes. But I'm very excited too. So, yeah. what about you, Denise? Um, I just started listening to Love It First by Kate Claiborne, and I am started um, The Way You Love Me by L. Wright, uh, both on audiobooks. I don't know why my brain works that way, that I can switch between two audiobooks, but it's working for me, so I'm going to roll with it. And then I am reading um, Too Good to Be Real by Melanie Johnson, which comes out here in a couple months, and Love Delayed in Dublin by Moni Boyce, which has been out for a while. I just love it so much. It's like travel and like insta love and you're in ireland and just just doing it and falling in love and it's kind of my catnip and all of the books behind me on the shelf are on my to read pile which is deep <laughs> okay you? you got you got a lot on your plate as well um I'm busy writing, so I'm not giving myself a whole lot of time to read fun things, but I have committed to Marie Lipscomb. Lipscomb? Uh, she's got a series uh, about the champions. So the ladies champion and champions desire. And it's like, um, I'm guessing fantasy-ish, but historical um, warriors and whatnot. The main character is very lovely. She is in love with a former champion, a fighter who's known as the bear. And um, he's a big guy and it's great fat rep for a hero, which as I was telling you guys, don't really get that much. Um, so he's like, you know, kind of a washed up fighter, uh, but she really loves him and she loves the ballads that they sing about him and she believes in him regardless of his size and thinks that he's still got fighting left at him. I like it. <clears throat> That's pretty much it, I guess. Well, it was very lovely to have brunch again with everybody and everybody who is watching um cherish you gonna sing us out <laughs> unbeknownst to everybody i already took a photo of us while we were holding up cherish's book and so we all look ridiculous and it's fantastic oh, great I have one where we're all smiling and i put it in our group chat oh good uh let's see take me to brunch tonight i don't want let you go till we have been most us <laughs> okay it's really everybody, hard coming up with these everybody, everybody smile for our group photo <laughs> okay so. hi everyone it was good talking to you we will see bye. you soon